I do what I do because I believe that story work is soul work. I believe that story work is healing. I believe that story work will set you free and help you create again. Just like how it has for me. No? Tune back into that little girl within me who played as if there were no boundaries on energy, who created without limits and in all dimensions and realms and worlds, who was able to articulate with her words the beauty that she felt in the energy around her and who was able to hear what was not being said beyond the words, to be able to understand without words the experience of others. This is what I feel as the leaders of the new way of doing business of the new way of being in this world and being of this world that are being called to, yes, to be able to articulate the words to the vision, but more so to feel what is being, what is not said, to hold that energy and that frequency, to be able to truly feel our way through life, to be able to hold the spaces and the containers that we are meant to from a deeper level of understanding, understanding, compassion, and healing. Welcome to It's Not What You Think, the podcast that takes you on a transformative journey to rewrite your story of greatness and reawaken your soul's purpose. I'm your host, Selena Costa, a subconscious mind expert, master coach, and believer in the limitless power and magic that lives within all of us. My intention in this podcast is to propel you into your next level of success so that you are free to create the life that your heart most desires. Through deep, actionable insights, personal stories, and world-class guests, I'll provide you with the tools, strategies, and resources you need to unlock the fullest expression of who you're meant to be in this lifetime so that you can consciously design a reality that is beyond what you could have ever dreamed of. Join me on this journey to personal growth and evolution, and let's live our lives in accordance with our highest soul's calling. This podcast is your weekly check-in to help this path become more simple, obtainable, and fun. Thank you for tuning in today. And now let's dive in. Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome back to It's Not What You Think. So it's been about a year since I have created this podcast. And as I was feeling into where I want to take this next, I felt inspired to come in and share a message from my heart with you and do a little bit of a, I guess, a reintroduction, you know, as someone who has made a career out of helping leaders tell their story, it's so important for me to continue to revisit my own story and how I relate with it. And uh, both in my internal being, as well as how I relate to it in what is happening on a collective level. And so I wanted to drop in here today and share a message with you about what I feel is happening on a collective level about me, a little bit more about me. For those of you who have been listening to this podcast for a while, the first three episodes of this podcast, we go into a deep, 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 deep dive into my story and why I do what I do and why I'm here. Um, but this is, let this be like a little summary. Um, and, uh, and yeah, to share a bit more of my heart with you. So without further ado, uh, let's dive in. I believe that we are going through a collective shift an unraveling of sorts where we are currently being called into a new way of leading, a new way of being in business, a new way of being who we were born to be, where there's many of us right now, especially those of you listening to this episode, who are finding that things are no longer working. Things that used to work are no longer working, where things are feeling hard, where perhaps You've gone into a dark night of the soul. And whether that is through experiencing loss, change, illness, stress, whether we have been brought into this place where we have already found our way out or we're still in it, wherever you are on your journey, I know that this is all for a purpose. And I'm so excited for all of us, all of us light leaders, all of us change makers dedicated to truly making a change in this world as we stand now, as if we're bridging between two worlds, the old and the new, as if our souls are calling us forward into a place of unknown and uncertainty, this place where we can't fully articulate the vision yet, 
that we feel brewing in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds. And yet we know that it is right there. And yet, how do we lead when we feel we are teetering between these two worlds? Let me tell you that as we become more anchored in the here and now, as we learn to trust the unfolding of our stories, as we heal the storylines, not only in this moment, but in lifetimes before and throughout all dimensions, that we can come into a place of harmony and resonance with our story and our collective story. There is great power right now for those who are being called within to now begin to lead from the shadows and into the light. Because so many of you, myself included, we've been focusing so much on that inner work. And because we've been working on ourselves, because we have showed up for ourselves again and again, because we have answered the call, we are ready. I spent quite some time in the past few months looking back over my life as someone who supports change makers, leaders, visionaries to tell a better story, to heal their story of the past so they can bridge into the story of the future. I find it to be my responsibility to continue to revisit and re-excavate my own story, to see the places and spaces where I still need to heal, the places and spaces where I need to come into deeper peace, integration with myself, and the places and spaces where there are still gifts waiting to be activated, where my treasure still lies. And so as I look back over my life, I see this little girl born in Rome, Italy, a Brazilian mom and an Italian father. But then due to life, being life, finding myself being raised by a single mama in those moments where I found myself as that only child alone, playing on my own. I can see now that there was so much within me that knew the power of creation through words, poetry, song, music, and art. And because of my upbringing as an only child, single mom, all that time that I had to take for myself and the solace that I found in, in art, music, poetry, reading, I've always had that creation within me. It's part of my story and it has served me well. Though my mother and I found ourselves in a place uh, where we were plunked into, I grew up in Italy, then lived in Brazil. And uh, due to my former stepfather, um, we moved to the USA. Just found myself at the age of 10, uh, an immigrant, just plunked <laughs> into this new country. Uh, and where I did not speak the language, I did not speak English, where words seemed to really matter. <laughs> but because I couldn't speak them quite yet, I got very good uh, as a child. I got very good reading the energy of a room because I couldn't fully understand the words that were being spoken in that room. And I could feel as I was growing up, immigrated in the US. I could feel what people were trying to express to a degree. And I got really good at listening, not only to the words, but what was behind the words, what wasn't being fully said, but instead was being felt. And that's part of my story. It's part of how I learned the art of listening, the art of listening beyond words, and then the art of speaking the right words because of my listening. And I'm really grateful for this part of my story where I was dropped into this new place where I didn't speak the language because it helped me hone the skill. It helped me hone the skill that would help me to become a well-known storyteller and will help me to become an even more well-known storyteller after I followed the path of being, after I claimed for myself that I was going to march to the rhythm of my own drum, 
Because before then, I was checking the boxes. And as I grew up from age 10 into my teenagehood and, and young adulthood, living in the United States, living the American dream, working really hard in corporate and in my education, putting myself through school, getting straight A's, finding myself, moving to New York City because that was the place that I needed to be. That was the one place where I needed to move if I wanted to have any chance of succeeded in my specific choice of career which is advertising, then yes, check the box. I checked it. I checked the box. I checked the box. I checked the box. I did all the things I thought I was supposed to do. For all throughout my early adulthood, I did it all. Like a good girl, that young creative child who used to write poetry and music and uh, just consume, devour books on her free time, implanted into this new foreign country, learning the language, learning how to listen to people, and also realizing that if I wanted to fit in, I needed to be a certain way. And so this is how I needed to be. The good school, the good job, the good grades. And I did it. Check, 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 check. I did it all. I followed all the ways that I thought would bring me success in the end. And doing it, the reason why I did it was, yeah, it was for the purpose, my purpose was to follow the plan. That was my purpose. Because all of my decisions at this point in my life were strategic. I would go to the best school. I would get the best grades. I would go to the city where we all go to because that's what I was meant to do. And I would stay in that corporate job for three years, even though it was sucking the life out of me because that's what I thought I was meant for. (laughs) And that's what I did. But here's the thing. The universe has a way of waking us all up. And in this moment in time, this was 2015, a lot happened in a short amount of time where I found myself in this place where the universe really shook me up, really shook me up. What I learned today that I didn't know back then, I didn't know back then was that you don't have to wait until the moment of crisis in order to make a big change in your life. So many of us, the classic hero's journey, we wait until the breakdown, until we're down on our knees, until the pain is so bad that we can't stand it, until things fall apart so hard that we we, we come to the point of a choiceless choice and we have no choice but to choose differently. That's what happened back then. It's not part of my story today because now I understand that you can choose to change from a place of joy, from a place of choice, from a place of sovereignty, but I didn't know that back then. Back then, I was resisting with all my mind. Back then, I was so scared and I didn't know another way. I didn't know how I could change my life. All I knew was the life that I knew and that I had to follow it to feel safe. So back then, I went on a volunteer trip to Cambodia and, uh, and on the side, as, as I did that, I took a two week break from my job, my corporate job in America and was writing on the side. And I remember during that trip, I, I was letting that inner girl within me express herself in a way that she couldn't in her corporate job because there were rules and boxes that she was placed into. But when I found myself in this place, volunteering in Cambodia, and I looked around and I saw the extreme poverty And I saw with my own eyes and felt with my heart, the souls and the stories of the people there and how tragic their lives were, the suffering that they'd gone through, the catastrophe that marked that place. And at the same time that I was witnessing and feeling all of this, I lost my grandfather, someone who I so deeply yearned to be closer with and thought I had more time, but I didn't. And there was a part of me that when I was removed from my normal corporate environment in this place of just completely cracked open, and then also my grandfather passes away, 
there was part of me that felt this calling. And even to this day, I can feel it. I can feel what it feels like. Though I couldn't fully articulate it yet. I could feel it calling. I could feel it pulling at me. I didn't fully have the vision of what I wanted to do or who I wanted to be landing yet. But I could feel that this calling, which I can only describe, I can only describe as there's more, something more than this. It was right in front of me. I could feel the energy of it. And yet I also needed a few more nudges from the universe. <laughs> so when I got back to New York City, September, 2015, a month later, I did not get the promotion that I wanted for that job. And so I thought, oh, interesting. This could be a reason for me to leave this job. And then just a couple of weeks later, my then boyfriend ended up breaking up with me on my birthday. It's like, oh, interesting. I don't have a relationship to hold me down here anymore. And then just a few weeks later, my rent skyrocketed. It went up and I couldn't afford it because I didn't get the raise. So I thought, interesting. I actually do need to literally leave this apartment in four months. It was hard. It was a lot of things hitting me at the same time. A lot of my life crumbling at the same time. And you know, looking back now, I can see what I didn't see back then, which is that in those moments where we sometimes could look at those times in our lives as the most challenging, and we could go into that, this place of why are things happening? Why is this happening to me? What's, what's wrong? Does the universe not have my back? Yet what I thought was a problem back then, what I thought was pain back then, what I thought was me being set up in not a good way back then, what I see now is divine intervention. And in those moments where sometimes we can look at these quote unquote difficult times in our lives as the most challenging, and we could go into this place of why are things happening? Is this happening to me? Does the universe no longer have my back? It's tempting to go into a place of this is not for me. And yet what I can see now that I couldn't see back then is that this was divine intervention. And during this time where everything was falling apart, just dissolving right in front of me, and then I didn't know what to do, but I had a burning desire to listen, to listen to that voice that was telling me there was more. That's when my vision landed. At that point in time, I began to see that vision that was previously so blurry and felt so inaccessible and just out of reach, it started to become something that was next on my path. Because you see, we get visions all along the way. And I'm grateful for the vision that I followed to New York City. Even though it was from a place of what I thought I should do, it was still a vision to go to New York when I graduated my university. And that vision, even though it was coming from that space of this is what I think I should do, it gave me the skill sets of understanding the mechanics of brand and storytelling. So that when I decided to book a one-way ticket to circumnavigate the world and to stay only with, with in the homes of people who are just six degrees apart from me in their homes, this social experiment to see the world, but most of all, to see the world through others' eyes. I could see when I made the choice, when it landed, that I needed to do something brave. Hello, soul family. I hope you're loving this episode so far. Before we dive back in, I'd love to share with you one of my most popular and beloved free resources on how to stand out and magnetize your dream clients with your irresistible story. Because here's the thing, you have a powerful story inside of you. There's no doubt about that. But the question is, are you telling it in a way that empowers you? And not only that, that connects with and compels your audience. Whether you are a business owner or a leader who's in charge of influencing others, this masterclass will propel you in the direction of becoming someone who tells compelling stories that change people's lives, starting with your own. 
This is the secret sauce to standing out in a crowd of sameness and being seen as a go-to expert. Because here's the truth. If you don't own your story, it will own you. So if you're ready to step into your truth and tell your story unapologetically and confidently without the wobbles, start here. Go to the show notes or type in the link selindacosta.com slash free masterclass to dive in. Enjoy. And now let's get back into the episode. So in this second round, I did what I couldn't do the first round. I sat in the shadows and from this work, I began to unravel my own stories because our stories not only help us to be able to understand our world, but they can also hold a charge where we see a certain story from a certain perspective that actually is not serving us, that is keeping the energy stuck, that is keeping us in a cycle, in a loop, like what just happened in my life a couple of years prior, where I had gone from a corporate job, exhausted, unfulfilled, to this place of awakening and taking the leap and realizing I'm going to follow this new vision and this new path, which was right for me. But then somewhere along the way, I fell out of flow again. I fell out of synchronicity because my mind, my stories, my disempowering stories got back in the way and they snapped me out. And so that's what caused me to then follow into that same pattern to create the same experience just from a different lens of consciousness. And there I sat watching myself again, coming into a place of understanding that there is a new vision. There is a new vision. A new vision that I once again can feel, but maybe can't fully articulate, just like last time. And yet I can, because what I know is that for those who are also, who have been walking and navigating their own dark night of the soul, who have truly been dedicating behind the scenes to their own inner work, the experience of falling out of grace and navigating back into grace taught me the skills to see you. It taught me the skills to feel you. So when I reflect back on my story and the moments and the places and spaces where I had a vision, I couldn't fully articulate it, but I could feel it. And I took a leap forward because I knew there was a way out. I can see and understand and having had many conversations, not just my own experience, but with oh my gosh, hundreds of people at this point who have navigated their own transition. Looking back on my story now, I can see the humanness of being stuck in that cycle and the spiral dynamics of learning how to overcome our own patterns. For me, it looked like learning how to overcome the golden cage that I continue to put myself in. Because from that dark night of the soul, From that experience and navigating through it and realizing, oh, wow, things fell apart once again to fall back together. About two years later, I experienced another health crisis and a breakup that really broke me open, broke my heart open. But this time, I was wiser. And this time I had a vision and this time I realized that I didn't have to go to rock bottom in order to rise again and in order to trust that when I fall, it's not actually a fall. It's, it's an opening. It's an abyss that the universe is inviting me into so that I can step into a new way of being. And one of the biggest lessons, I've taken many set lessons from my stories from the many, many times that I've looked at my story and learned and healed and, uh, and taken notes. One of the biggest lessons that I learned is that our story, it doesn't have to loop, but it will loop if it goes unchecked. And even if I look at the spiral of 
2015, 2016, and then 2019, and then 2020, and then the health crisis in early 2022, and realizing that so long as I was doing the work and holding the vision that there is a better way, that it's possible, that we are able, not just me individually, but collectively, we are able to rise beyond our challenges, beyond our fears, beyond our conditions, beyond, beyond and above and beyond our story. I started to also integrate the codes that we don't have to come crashing down to rise, that we don't have to get to the point of crisis, breakdown, destitution in order to lead the changes that we want to see in our lives. So I'm grateful for my story because of my story. When that health crisis and that heartbreak arrived in 2022, I was a different person. I knew I didn't have to hit rock bottom again in order for me to understand how to take better care of myself. I didn't need to sink into a dark, another dark night of the soul for me to believe that I was worthy, that I could ask for help and that support was there. And that allowed me to raise the ceiling or the floor rather, (laughs) or more simply put, to raise my standards of where was the bottom of where I was willing to meet myself. 2022 was the year where I more than doubled my business revenue. I learned how to relate to money in a healthier way. It was the year that I went on a deep healing journey that I share here on the podcast around from my heart and to clean up my love story. It was the year that I started to take my health really seriously and it kickstarted a whole journey of learning gut health, cellular hydration, learning how to move my body, just learning how to take care of my vessel. And there is no way that I would have been able to take what I would say was arguably the most challenging period of my life, even more than the first two times, and just use it as curriculum for growth and evolution the way that I did if I hadn't learned from my story twice before. If I hadn't taken away the lessons, if I hadn't done the inner work, if I hadn't really squeezed that lemon of its juice and evolved from my story instead of just getting over it, telling a good story about it, but not actually learning from it. So it allowed me to propel myself. And so whenever I face a challenge today, whenever I feel like I'm struggling or going through a really deep transition, as I know during this period in time, A lot of people are going through some really big shifts. But if I hadn't had learned from my story back then and everything that I've been, if I hadn't studied my story, if I hadn't really looked at it, cleaned it up, done the work to release the shame, to release the guilt, to release the fears and really seen my gifts. Because one of the gifts that I received from my own story is my strength, my courage and my ability to adapt. And so when life now presents itself with challenges, I no longer see it as, oh shit, I'm going down. This is the end of me. I see it as, ah, hello universe. Here you are again to course correct me. Here you are again to propel me into even better reality, into even more growth, into a higher version of myself. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And so these events no longer propel me into a dark night of the soul, but rather jumpstart me, wake me up and help me see that there's a new chapter that's ready to be written. That something much brighter is on the horizon and that I am taken care of and that life has got my back every single day time, every single time. And I've learned from that. 
I've learned enough from that to feel that in my bones. Any time a challenge presents itself in my life, even if it's frustrating, even if in that moment I don't see why it's happening, even if I'm disappointed, angry, upset, there's a deeper part of me that I can touch now that believes it's happening to make me better, that believes it's happening so that I can grow and evolve, that believes that this is curriculum for my greatness. That's the power of my story. So even though I I didn't dive in today into my story in the intricate details, and I've given you broad strokes of what's happened in my life, the details don't matter so much as the way that my relationship to my story has changed me. Because at the crux of the work that I do and the way I help others tell their story as well is this. The deeper you understand and embody your own story, the stronger and greater you become. The more confident you become, the more clear you become on who you are, what your values are, what matters most to you. And it becomes your roadmap and your safeguard against your own patterns. Because when you can see the patterns that you've ran in your past, the situations you've repeated in your past, the unnecessary suffering that you've been subject to in your past, and you can see it with eyes wide open, That's when you get to consciously choose to change the story. And you do that first and foremost by doing your inner work, by going in, by releasing the stuck emotions that have kept you small, by rewriting the narratives that have been disempowering you because of the ways that you've consciously or unconsciously perceived your own reality. You do that by seeing the bigger picture of of the story that you're weaving, zooming out. I wouldn't be able to see my patterns if I just look at one incident in my life. I have to look at several different incidents and how they play out and their timelines and how I react over time, like a scientist looking at my own data points to realize where I could actually affect change. So my intention today was to give you an inner snippet of what it actually looks like to do story work, what it feels like, and what actually can be created from the inside and how your story is the most sacred thing that you'll carry with you your entire life. Not only that, but the way you choose to perceive it and the way you choose to tell it and the way you choose to use your story as curriculum for your life will greatly determine the quality of your life. It will also determine how you show up. It will also determine your ability to influence other people with your story to be able to tell your story from such a place where they hear you and they feel you. And because they feel you, they make decisions that are aligned to your mission that bring your legacy forward in in very uncomplicated terms. This is how your ideal audience, your ideal clients can find you, connect with you and want to work with you. And it's how you can share your story of pain and in a way that is so empowering and allows people to not need to make the same mistakes that you made. It could save them time. It could save them energy. It could save them a lot of work. (laughs) So this is an ode to all of you who have been truly dedicating behind the scenes to do your inner work. I see you. I feel you. And I know you're on the precipice of that next vision being born, that next part of you coming into full expression. And yet, even if it feels so far off and and you're not sure, 
as you're teetering in between those two worlds of what you have known and what is unknown. But what I do know is that I'm here to help you step into your resonance with your new story, to help you do the energy work, the somatic work, to be able to see, yes, the vision, but also to see the stories that are blocking the realization of that vision coming into existence because you are a powerful creator. And yet everything is becoming new and you can feel that. And it is time for you to see it in a different way. It is time for you to let go of the old, even though a part of you is still grasping at it and help you to then from that place of rewiring this new story into your bodies from a somatic level, that's when we can start to reinstall the new beliefs that are connected to articulating your story and your truth and ultimately realigning you to your soul's purpose and your new identity that was born out of the shadows. I do what I do because I believe that story work is soul work. I believe that story work is healing. I believe that story work will set you free and help you create again, just like how it has for me. No, tune back into that little girl within me who played as if there were no boundaries on energy, who created without limits and in all dimensions and realms and worlds, who was able to articulate with her words, the beauty that she felt in the energy around her and who was able to hear what was not being said beyond the words to be able to understand without words, the experience of others. This is what I feel as the leaders of the new way of doing business, of the new way of being in this world and being of this world that are being called to, yes, to be able to articulate the words to the vision, but more so to feel what is being, what is not said, to hold that energy and that frequency, to be able to truly feel our way through life, to be able to hold the spaces and the containers that we are meant to from a deeper level of understanding, understanding, compassion, and healing. Because I know you who is still listening, you who is resonating with this message, I know that you have done the work and will continue to. And this is what the world needs now. Leaders who are realigned to their sole purpose and their new identity and who are leading from a place of truth and the story that they create in the here and now, in this moment, as they rewrite their next story. So if this is you, I celebrate you. I celebrate you for having the courage to look at the scary, to look at the dark, to look at what's unpleasant, and to choose a new way forward that is in highest alignment with your being, with your soul purpose. That's the story that you get to write. You get to learn from your story of the past, to grow and evolve from that story. Let that be your curriculum. And you get to turn that vision into the story of your future. And you get to write that now into the future. To the leader who's listening to this, to the change maker, to the visionary, this is for you. Don't be shy. Write the story. Own it. Embody it. The world will thank you for it. Because we need more people who emanate who they say they are. So that's my message that wanted to come through today. And to the leader who's really committed to this work, who's ready to dive into this work, to rewrite their story of the past, to come into harmony with their story of the past so that you can rewrite your story of the future with true influence, with true impact on the people that it touches, as well as with the influence that you will have on the income that you make, 
through the messages that you share. For those of you who are ready to do this work, know that I am also here for you. I have several offerings around storytelling and how to um, do this work, which you can see in the show notes. Depending on the time that you're listening to the podcast, there may be private one-on-one coaching uh, available with me. So just check in the show notes and you can find the information on how you can work with me to shape this reality, to become a well-known embodied leader influencer in your space. And, um, yeah, that's the message can apply in the show notes and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you, beautiful humans for tuning into today's episode of it's not what you think. If you loved what you received today, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it helps us reach even more amazing listeners like you. If we aren't already connected on social media, come receive even more tips and inspiration by following me on Instagram at Celine DaCosta or visiting my website at CelineDaCosta.com. After listening to this episode, I invite you to take a few moments to reflect. What stood out to you? What were your key takeaways or breakthroughs? And if there was one action step you could take from this, what would it be? Thank you again for joining me on this journey. I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to connect in the next episode. Until then, keep sharing your unique gifts and living out your most magical life.